What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course you know it's your boy b Hop Radio Yo Shout there stepping in the building. I got Tony Lewis Jr., Tony Lewis Sr. in this thing. First of all, right. they ain't twins, okay? It's a father and son tandem <laughs> that's saving our community right now as we speak. That's How y'all right. doing today, fellas? That's right, amazing. we wonderful. wonderful. Hey, man. Can y'all just break down the story for those that don't know, man? Because, I mean, it started in the 80s. Well, before the 80s when Junior was born. But it started in the 80s with this crap, crack epidemic going crazy. Yeah. What was that time like for y'all during that time? Well, I, you know, for me, I go first. Uh, the yeah. 80s was, uh, it was the best years of my life. Okay. Up until now. <laughs> Up until now. You I'm know with what I'm you. saying? But, uh, yeah, man, uh, you know, so much love, man. You know, so much community, a sense of community, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not like how things have... Uh, gotten today mm-hmm. you know um plenty of money yeah, plenty yeah. of money to be had you know what i'm saying or uh, not trying to glorify it you That's know right. what i'm saying but it was the only way we knew how mm-hmm. the only way we saw how everybody yeah. before us uh that's all they did our whole block you know yeah. what i'm saying it was hustling in some form whether it was starting with robberies the banks you know then marijuana then you know cocaine then crack cocaine and, yeah. yeah yeah man so you know that's that's all we knew uh you know, wish it was another way. You know, I wouldn't have went to prison for thirty something years. You know, yeah. but hey, man, you know that's in the hood. You what know? was DC like before the crack uh, came into the city? Oh man, it was uh, you know, chocolate city. Yeah, wonderful man. Mm-hmm. You know, again, like I said, man, it's I just I miss the love and the sense of community. You know, yeah. the block was always together. Not just your block, but the block beside you, the next block. Exactly. The projects up here, everybody knew each other, and it was it was it was just. It, it was so much love, man, and care, you know, exactly. in a lot of ways, which only we probably can know as hood people, you know. Other people yeah. can look, other races can look, you know, from other places and think, oh, how is that love? What is, you know, da, da, da. but, it's, you know, that's yeah. what it was. It was beautiful. And, man. like, you know, I was born in 1980. Okay. Right? Yeah. So the world he describing is the world I was birthed into. Okay. Um, A, a city that was, you know, I think, you know, obviously with, um, Atlanta has some uh, uh, relation to that in terms of black leadership. Yeah. Right? A lot yeah. of black people. Um, mm-hmm. But in D.C., everybody was black. Mm-hmm. And we wasn't in the middle of Georgia, right? <laughs> I mean, that context is a little yeah, different I for here, you. right? Yeah. It was, it, when we say Chocolate City, it wasn't just in the sense of having a, when I came into existence, uh, 75% of D.C. was African American, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But you're talking about the mayor. The teachers, the judges, the lawyers, the police, the everything, yeah. right, yeah. was black. Well, now that's the same thing here. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. you get that, yeah. right? You yeah. get that context. Exactly. So, um, but but through the 80s and coming from our block, a Hanover place, which yeah. uh, has, in terms of the underworld, like a lot of places in the city, uh, as in around the country, the crack epidemic changed the dynamics, right, as it did in D.C., but our community was always involved in the underworld, right, going back to my grandparents, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, and with that came, growing up the way we did, I did, we came into a, 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 I was born into a community of love and, and, and connectivity, yeah. um, and, you know, I also was there when that went away. Yeah. And a lot of where we are today has a great relation to what happened in our city in, in the eighties, but more so in the nineties. Yeah. When the, the 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 murder rate just went out of the window, when they took away guys like my dad and yeah. gave him these elongated sentences. Yeah. Right. And not only that, uh, we also had a situation that happened in the late nineties where our local prison system, uh, we had a prison that was ran by our DC Corrections that was in Virginia though. Yeah. On a twenty minute drive away. It was called Lorton. Okay. Um Lorton got closed in 1997, uh, Capital, National Capital Revitalization Act mm. um, that took control of D.C.'s corrections. The federal government took control of that. Yeah. So all our inmates started going to the federal system. That also was a catastrophic thing for that sense of community. Even though people were in prison, they were close to home. Exactly. Right? Now, for us, my father went to prison in 89, and they got life without parole. My dad was shipped all the way to Long Park, California yeah. for the next 13 years. So me personally, I had already experienced what a lot of other young brothers and sisters in my city would start to experience, yeah. meaning having they not only having an incarcerated parent, but having their parent being anywhere yeah. in the United States where they had bed space. Exactly. And that had a, a catastrophic um, impact on familial bonds, um, our ability 
to sort of utilize um, folks' influence yeah. to bring peace to the streets. Yeah. You know what I mean? To squash certain things. Those people now weren't 20 minutes away. Facts. You understand what I'm, I'm saying? And I you. think in the mindset of a lot of dudes, too, uh, that come up in my era, you knew if you did something, and it was a lot going, a lot of, a lot of things being done. Yeah. But you knew nine out of ten, if you ain't have a federal charge, you was going down Lorton. Yeah. And you had to see them people. Yeah. You had to see their fathers and their uncles and their big brothers. Thanks. I think it informed people differently in their decisions. When that went away, you know, it just it just made things even crazier. Exactly. Senior, for you, what was it that caused you to get caught up and get arrested by the end of it and have to get sentenced to all of that time? Did you feel like it was coming to an end, or was it just a surprise situation? Mm, it wasn't exactly a surprise situation. Uh, my uh, my involve, involvement with Rayford Edmond, uh, that what that's what brought my thing to end. Because before that, I you know I always made it purposely that I always tried to fly under the radar. Yeah. And he was one of them flamboyant, you know, he, and I, I knew that from the beginning. Yeah. And our relationship, you know, we went to high school together. Mm. But we really didn't have a relationship then. And, uh, you know, I was a little older than him, graduated, came out, and, uh, and we formed, you know, some type of relationship, you know. Yeah. But I knew, at the, I knew then that he was, that, that was him. Mm -hmm. Our profile, he wanted everybody to know what he's doing. And yeah. So I said to myself, I can still have a relationship, but I can keep myself kind of distant. Yeah, yeah. But that, obviously, it, it didn't it didn't work because it was just too, and that's what, you know, brought everything, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, for me. When all the money was coming in, though, senior, what was going through your mind at that time when the money was coming in hand over fist? But see, that's, that's what people, that's the part of the story people don't really realize if we talking about the relationship as far as me and Ray for Admin. Yeah. Already was getting money hand over fist before it's, I even knew. But no, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about your yeah, personal yeah, yeah, relationship no with the yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, right yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, uh, like I said, it was a beautiful thing. I mean, yeah. you know, um, uh, you know, again, not to glorify, you know, the drug game and crime. You know what I'm saying? But again, that's that was my job. That's all I knew. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, you well, know. see, the thing is, you're talking about both sides of the story. So, I mean, it ain't nothing wrong with explaining exactly what yeah. the good or the bad. Yeah, yeah, you see no what I'm saying? Doubt. It just is what it is yeah. because they're going to get their uh, vegetables with their dessert yeah, today. Yeah, 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 you see yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? No so we don't mm -hmm. care. And I just, mm -hmm. you know, again, I paid uh, 34 years of my life for the, for this shit. So, so I, did you feel like them 34 years was worth those years no, free? Fuck. No, fuck no. Okay. The 34 years. I mean, no no amount of money in the world that I could have have made was uh, worth what those 34 years, what it, what I went through, but yeah. mainly what my son went through in the family, because that's what all I'm thinking about when I got arrested. What the fuck my son going to do, man? What, how is this going to affect him and, you know, my close loved ones? As a man, I yeah. got to accept what happened to me. I got to handle this shit, whatever exactly. come I'm going to handle it. And, yeah. And that's what, you know, 34 years, that's what I had to do, but I had, but I, my main worry was about my son and my close relatives, man, What? because I was the bread when I was everything. Exactly. And that shit mean, that's what caused me to uh, start selling drugs and get in a life of crime is to provide for my family, man. Exactly. Where there was no other ways and other means in the hood. I know all y'all can understand that in, yeah. in a certain way, man, but yeah. I wasn't uh didn't was I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be this big drug dealer and I wanted to be you know yeah. I had to make shit happen man I had come a mother, on you know a son you know other family members and I was young but I I was I was a, a man and that's why I had to step up exactly you know? now yeah. I mean take me to the day that you got incarcerated junior yeah. when you saw dad about to go away and you knew it was about to be for thirty something doggone years. Yeah. What was going through your young mind at that time? Did you even realize what was going nah, on? Nah. And then after that happened, how long did it take for it to kick in? That oh man, I ain't gonna see my daddy for a long behind time. Yeah, yeah, be like that's a great question, right? So I'm, 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 I'm used to be a show in DC called City Under Siege mm -hmm. uh, that came on every night, sort of chronicling, uh, 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 you know, all of the drug busts and the murders and stuff that was happening in the city. Yeah, uh, you know, it was back when people had. Beepers, right? So yeah, I'm beeping yeah. my father, my mother, you know what I'm saying? He ain't responding. Then people kept kind of calling back to the house, but hanging up. But then the streets kind of stopped buzzing. People calling, I heard they got locked up. I heard Tony got locked up, you know, yeah. with no confirmation. But then we, you know, we wind up seeing it on City Under Siege. 
Um, and it really, honestly, right, my whole life changed that day. Mm. Nothing was ever the same, including, you know, the most significant thing was, you know, uh, you know, subsequently he would go on to get life without the possibility of parole. So the idea of it wasn't no 30 some years. It was forever. Right. Yeah. That was one that yeah. came later. But I'm saying, but my mother changed and never was the same, even like to right now. Right. So mm. this stuff has been like significant. So my whole world, you got I'm the only child. I ain't got no brothers and sisters. Yeah. Right. Um, and the life filled with stability and my parents and smiles yeah. and her from there. It's, it's, it's crazy because I thought about that like through my life. I always thought about how before everybody was always happy, and then after he went to jail, it seemed like nobody was happy again. Mm. Like straight up, I'm talking about way into my adulthood. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. life, life literally changed. The other thing that was significant, you know, they went to DC jail first, but then they was getting preferential treatment. And they got moved to Quantico Marine Base, mm -hmm. right? The most strategic Marine Base in the United States based on its locale, right? Yeah. They were locked up there, bro. You had to go visit, like, at the cell. Mm. Like, now there no visiting hall. Now you had to hear you on the heat. Like, I'm looking at you. Yeah. you the bars in between us. Uh, you know, and the other thing I think that's important, my father didn't go to jail before that. Like, I had uncles in prison and fam all our family members did. But went to, you know, did, I mean, friends and stuff like that, but never him. Yeah. So, again, that was also kind of different yeah. for, for, for me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I grew up in innocence gone, yeah. you know what I'm saying, in that moment, for sure. Senior, how did you feel when you got that life sentence? How did that hit you at that moment when you realized that they got me I was out here balling, having the yeah. time of my life. Yeah. It came to an end, and I'm never going to see the light of yeah. day again as a free man. Yeah. Shit hit like a fucking ton of bricks, you know? Yeah. So abrupt. Yeah, that's how you get snatched away. Like we always say, tell the young guys, try not to don't get taken, because yeah. that's what happened to me. Tell me. And they'll throw you away. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's what they tried to do to me. Yeah. If it's not for my son, mm. man, get me out of prison. I would have been thrown away, still wasting away in prison. And yeah. Mentally though. Yeah. We talking about mental health during yeah. this time. All what that, was man. your mental during that time? Man, my mental man, uh, you know, you you have to reinforce your mental because if you don't, it will get, slip away the fuck away from you. You know Come what I'm saying? Come on now. Yeah, that's the real shit, man. Yeah. Life without parole for yeah. motherfucking drugs. I mean, that's I mean, just you never been incarcerated before, even but even if you had been before, you you know, you didn't you didn't figure that that's, that that was the type of sentence that was gonna come down because the new laws had just came out during yeah. the time yeah. when I, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's nobody was point. even the fucking my lawyer didn't even know what the fuck. I'm looking up saying motherfucker, you the lawyer, you don't know what I was going. You ain't tell me this shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is how yeah. I knew that shit it had was. It never man. happened before. And that hundred to one shit yeah. on the crack, you know, the, the mandatory uh, minimum shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that shit kicked in and nobody was familiar with yeah. it until they knocked uh -huh. us and started knocking these cases off back to back, and that's when niggas. We got a lot of revisionist history in terms of when people talk about those times, right, and we jumble and mix everything in, like it's nah. When we talking about with day's situation, there was no precedent for yeah. that. Nobody never went in and got life without parole. I remember even being a little boy and hearing people say this before they got found guilty. Oh, they ain't finding with nothing. You know, cause cause before that you had to find somebody right. with something. Yeah. Yeah. The thing. idea of conspiracy, conspiracy was yeah, like wasn't all wasn't that nothing. was new to yeah. people, yeah. right? Yeah. New. You know, just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you figured if you didn't get caught with nothing, you could, what they gonna do? Exactly. You can't do nothing, but now, when when doing our time, and oh, yeah, all that shit. And the whole, the idea of like, again, being, taking young men, I'm looking, I'm saying, I'm looking from my lens now, yeah. taking young men, my father, 20, 26, six, Rafael at 24, 24. Um, from the hood, you taking them, you placing them at a, at a, at Quantico Marine Base, you got bulletproof courtrooms, you got yeah. sequestered jewelry. You know, you be hard yeah, pressed to after that. Yeah, like, you go? these doing these guys going these FCIs of uh, to start off their bits. That shit is right. sweet. And for yeah. for Looking context, what that mean for people, right? You in the federal system, you got yeah. supermax, you got the USP, was the United States Penitentiary, then you got most the FCI, then you got the camp or what low level, right? Yeah. A lot of guys that's coming with big cases now, and they going like to medium security yeah. prison, yeah. but yeah. they was going straight to the penitentiaries. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This so it was is my question, though, you know, fellas. During those 34 years, how often were you all in communication? Oh, as man. As much as I, I could be. I mean, you know, like I tell yeah. people, um, <laughs> you know, I, a lot of guys that I know, the first thing on the phone is, man, I'm calling that bitch. I'm calling my girl. I'm calling that bitch. 
that wasn't for me. For, yeah. I, I'm going to call you bitches. I'm going to catch up with y'all, but I'm calling my motherfucking son. Come on now. And, yeah. and, and, and my mother, my granddaughters, when they did, when they were born and shit, family was always the most important thing to me. And I knew he needed my support because I basically got him in this shit with me. Yeah. I mean, how can you get this is my son? He can't yeah. get away and away from it. And uh, I got to support my son first and my other close loved ones. And so uh, that was always my thing. Every chance I got, communication, whatever it is, it ain't just a lot of times we was locked down. I'm going to have that motherfucking pen in my hand. I'm writing my son. Yeah. yeah. You know? And how yeah. often were you able to lay eyes on him to yeah. actually see him? Well, at first, with at this long park, shit, 3,000 miles away. Yeah. That shit was tough right there, you know? Yeah, so when um, we went, he go to jail in 89, you know, whatever, get sentenced in the early 90 or whatever the case may be. Go to California. So I go out there in 92. Okay. 96. Okay. And 99. Okay. Right? So if you think in this three days of visiting per trip. So I saw him nine times in in, in, in a 13-year span. Yeah, yeah. Right? Then he get back to Maryland, right? Mm -hmm. He get back on the East Coast mm -hmm. where the visiting was pretty, it could be pretty regular, but I'm a grown, you know, I'm 20, drive. I'm the two-hour yeah. drive, I'm 22 by then. Yeah. But we talk on the phone, you know, uh, letters, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, that was really important. My, my, my mother, I remember when we first went in, my mother said something deep to me, i never forget. I two things about early on in this, this situation. My mother told me he needed me. Yeah. Right, as far as writing, she sat me down and said, "You gotta write him. You know, you're a little boy. I ain't trying to write no letter. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm trying to play whatever case. Now nah, you gotta write him because he needs you." Then the other thing was when he got the time, he told me, "Be strong." Them two things set the foundation for. That's what allowed me to hang in there for that 34 years. Because you yeah. think about it, bro. Really, I ain't. You know, until he got back to the to the East Coast. You know, nine seeing somebody nine times in, in, in 13 years and why you growing, you going from nine year old boy to twenty two year old man. And, and see, I'm I'm on question. the same block. Yeah. I I ain't living I'm li I'm we on the, we come from the same exact yeah. block mm -hmm. where the same or worse things are happening. Yeah. <laughs> Senior, when you saw him coming in there and you noticed, okay, I see a change in my son. He's gotten taller. <laughs> he done got swole. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he liking girls now. <laughs> Oh, and you seeing all of these different changes, how was that impacting you when you would see him come in there? And it was a different man every time yeah, he touched yeah, down. No doubt. First, it was so very interesting. I would just sit there and motherfucker look at him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's saying to myself, this is my motherfucking self. And I left. Mm -hmm. You know, he was eight years old or so. And, you know, and now I'm just looking at him as the years ticking yeah. off, man. I'm seeing him growing and I'm seeing him coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, again, like I said, it was interesting to me, and it was uh, it was emotional to me, mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was joyful, mm -hmm. and because I'm starting to see, because I'm I'm fearing that the streets gonna get him, like yeah. they basically got me, and get everybody else, every other male in the neighborhood, yeah, in the same block, everything same, th it was kind of like in a, in a worse way, mm -hmm. but he got people coming at him thinking that. Man, man, tell your dad, man, if we still here, what you, you gonna do? Son? They trying to lure him into uh, thinking that all kinds of shit, man. I'm hating this shit, and I'm staying in his ear, son. Mm -hmm. Look, son, you don't want you see what's what happened to me. You don't, I don't want you coming in here. I don't, and I'm hoping that this shit work. But you know, he's growing up now. He gonna do what the fuck he want. He he gonna listen to me while we hear my face or we on the phone. Yeah, dad, uh, and I don't know. You know, I'm hoping that he's. Mm -hmm. Could stay right and don't get fucked up like me. Yeah. So again, like I said, man, it was different emotions and things, you know. And uh, but uh, I'm just so proud of him, man, to exactly. you know, to see what he has become and just following that mm -hmm. all all that time along, you know. Exactly. Years. Yeah. So now, Junior, you getting bigger? Yeah. How much anger did you have when you was thinking to yourself, "I have a daddy that loves me and wants to be a part of my damn life." But these laws have him locked away forever. I'm over here getting older. I'm in these streets. I need him here to navigate these things with me. It'd have been so much more easy if he was here because he was one of the biggest, baddest folks out here in the streets. Yeah. But now I got to go and visit him at a dog on Marine base. Yeah, bro. The, the, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a progression of anger. It was more sadness than anger. Yeah. As I got older and the time got long, one of the things I mean from the work, the culture we come from. Yeah. Um, you know the idea of, it, though he hadn't been to prison prior to, you know, uh, we come we come from a world where people go to prison. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I feel like for, for somewhat of it was like, uh, 
for me was like that part was like because oh, I had my uncle had an uncle my mother's brother was in prison grew up my whole life going to see him up until that point mm-hmm. it was like but he gonna come back one day when, when it started to feel like he wasn't gonna come back and then when I got a little older and understood that he wasn't coming Shit. back that's when the, it's turned into like, I ain't like why would they take him away for forever like oh I understand because initially I did not Understand what life without parole meant. Yeah, we ain't know no nobody else had ever gotten life without parole. Yeah, right. So it took me, but as I grew up, then sort of I I became you know angry about that. Not to mention my mother dealing with her mental health issues and yeah, uh, going back and forth to the mental health facility and my friends dying now. You feel what I'm saying we beefing like in my neighborhood. Like yeah. So now it's like it's it's something to be angry about all the way around the board. You Come know what I'm now. saying? Um, but then having him on that phone and you know when when I did go to visit and encouraging me, giving me the tools to, to navigate yeah. some of the toughest terrain, having a grandmother and family members that yeah. poured into me, and for real a community that poured into me, yeah. that gave me the strength to really and I, I know one thing about it, at the end of the day, he never made his lifestyle, his decision, none of that. Uh he never made none of that shit sound like it was cool. And the biggest thing that he never did was made jail seem like it was I. Right. Every time I talked mm. to him on that phone, which was really when they went locked down or something, was daily, right? Yeah. It was daily. Was this shit sucks, man. Mm. You mm. don't wanna he never made like, you know, you might and I used to let me for real, like it's important to say this. Cause I'm saying I'm talking to my uncles, my cousins, my homies that's in jail. Yeah. You know, I be talking to them. Like, hey, what's up? Well, what's up, Slug? Slug, man. That's my nickname. Everybody call me. Yeah. Slug, what's up, man? I'm in the mind. I'm cool. I'm chilling, man. We got a little basketball tournament. Oh, I just bust these niggas' ass at Domino's. Like, they, they making jail scene. <laughs> like, or, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When I'm talking to him, it's like, man, this shit, man, I ain't, man, this shit, saying, I hate this shit, da da da. Yeah. So it is just always, uh, anyway, but keep going to school. Watch who you be around, Slug. Don't, you know? So I, t- I really took heed of it, but only the, 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 the application of that. That, though mm-hmm. was incredibly difficult. Yeah. Right. Where we come from, and I'm not saying that that's well where a lot of people come from. Yeah. I'm not saying like I'm the only we the only people come from a rough neighborhood. Yeah. But I'm just when I be talking, I be wanting people to really understand though this where we come from is a place where, you know, some people come from places where you gotta choose the fi- you gotta go find trouble or yeah. you gotta choose to get in trouble. We come from a place where you gotta like purposely choose not to get in trouble. Thanks. Trouble everywhere. Yeah. Daily, right? Yeah. And so um that was the tough part for me. That's what I had to figure out. And really, I had to figure out something that nobody else had ever had. Mm-hmm. And I don't say that to pat myself on my back, but the men from where we come, even the women, nobody has done what I did. Mm. There was no blueprint for what I did eventually. Come on. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm happy that every every uh, uh, piece of advice, every pat on the back, Every day in that crap jump with my Uncle Boo, with my Uncle Alvin, every time my Uncle Gregory did something he probably shouldn't have did, yeah. whatever. But it, I knew it was for me to be able to do something that they never did. Yeah. And that's what I received from the men around me. Yeah. Like, you going to go somewhere that that that, that we couldn't. Mm-hmm. And so once I acknowledged that that was now my responsibility, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I refused to, to turn back. And it wasn't linear. Yeah. I almost went to jail a million times. <laughs> How could I not? Even when I was trying not to be in the mix my option to be in a safer place was also in the mix. It's just just how it was. When we <laughs> Damn, and it's it's real. I ain't you know. It's how it was. But, exactly. But the work I I eventually found my work myself doing, uh, violence interruption work, peer to peer work, and the work saved my life. How did you save your dad's life, though? Mm-hmm. Man, that's the life right there. Man, how about that daddy, was the dog, life. And man, dad, how did life. you feel when that little <laughs> boy grew up to <laughs> save yeah, your dad's life? Man, oh man, it's just the, the pride is the sense of the pride that that I had for my son, man, and just the um, the amazement that I saw and see in him and the things that he's done and what he do. Yeah, and how he's. It's like it's never like uh, in his mind. It's never like this can't be done. Yeah. Or this is impossible. Yeah. It's never nothing impossible to him. Yeah. You know, and I always respected that. And a lot of times, I he's he used to come to me with different plans and stuff, but not sometimes concerning me, but just some other things out in, in the, that he had for the community or yeah. that he wanted to do. And I was like, out in my mind, I'd be like, son. How the fuck you gonna do that? <laughs> you can't do that. I would never tell him that though. Exactly. But in my mind, I'm thinking, and I'm just sitting there listening. We're in visit on the visit, and I'm just listening. Like, 
And I'll be like, this is my fucking boy. <laughs> <laughs> and every time and every fucking thing that he told me and said, he made this shit happen. Come on, man. And just like he told me, Dad, I'm going to get you out of jail one day. I don't know when, but I'm going to get you the fuck out of jail get you out of jail. And I'm going to get you out. Uh, so I'm coming to get you. And, and I and, put the service, the work, right? Yeah. The work to my community. Whether it was, you know, interrupting violence. Whether it was helping men and women returning from incarceration. Yeah. Feeding the homes or feeding the, feeding the food insecure. Yeah. You know, providing clothes and school supplies, turkeys, toys. All the things I've done on my 23-year year career Every, yeah. really Every is year. what allowed me mm -hmm. to, because in the midst, and I never made our struggle in the midst of fighting for his freedom, I'm still doing all the things I just described and more, in, impacting policy and yeah. legislation and all these things. But at the end of the day, my thing, the thing for me was to get my father out. Yeah. And I think through all of it, be, you know, the culmination of those things, and, and not just that, though, he is a probably one of the most respected men to ever come out of our town or, or one of his respected men in, 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 in the underworld across the country, right? Yeah. People have respect for him in regard. He could have been in prison acting a monkey, doing whatever, the, you know what I'm saying? Going, you know what I'm saying? He could have been I in know. there doing whatever. That's that mental shit. You know? I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, it's right there to be done. And, and, and every day you're angry. Every yeah. fucking day you're angry and you want it. This lash out and the shit is always it's, the trouble is there all the time, you yeah. know. And it's yeah, when yeah. you talking about the mental, that's exactly that's the so for him to maintain, to maintain. And I drew strength from yeah. from from that, and I understood that you know dudes coming home, from left, leaving from where he at, you know, or whatever the case may be. And I again, he not the only person, and I again, everybody around me was in prison. Yeah. And I'm going to visit. I know what they getting into. Like, you know, these different issues with other, you know, it just happens in prison, especially yeah. with you know guys from DC. And so, but 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 when I saw, and my dad is more introverted than I am, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But when I saw him starting to like blossom and reach out and really mold young guys and starting a program of yeah, you know yeah. coordinating program with with uh, the YMI program with Dominic Henry, who was a former inmate who came back in. Yeah. And, you know, other guy, young is coming home that I was helping to get jobs. Like, man, your father helped me out. He was encouraging me. I got my GED because your father. You know, all of that. Then it was like that also helped. Yeah. So, so now when we when we're going to push for his freedom, um, and again the service also, you know, connected me the work I was doing in my platform in DC connected me to people like Wale and then people like Pusha T and Pusha mm -hmm. T yeah. is the person who introduced us to connected us with our attorney Brittany Barnett Brittany yeah. you know what I'm Big saying Brittany yeah. Yeah. I'm all yeah. day Harriet Tubman if Texas. you don't know yeah, come no on question. now yes, she's special she is special being man, yes, man. on Wonderful everything I love bro she's a special she saved my life. person yeah, and, saved and, and saved a lot of other brothers yeah. and she specialized in getting people yeah. that have life without parole sentences yeah. re back to their families, bro. Yeah. So, so how Pusha did you make up with Pusha? So Pusha and I did the irony, right? So I'm a Pusha, I'm a Clips fan. Okay. You know, I mean? Clips was out first, right? Yeah. I'm a Clips fan. You know, and, and so I might post a, uh this was back, you know, on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? I might just be in my thoughts or post a picture or something and I put a, a, a Clips quote or push a quote. Yeah. And push it from Virginia, you know what I'm saying? Like four hours away, Virginia. Though. Like, not like the DMV, mm -hmm. the Northern Virginia, the, you know, suburban DC, Virginia. Yeah. He from, you know, the 757, they call it. Yeah. You know, Hampton, Virginia Beach, Newport News, all that. Yeah. So anyway, um, but I know he familiar with Pops and, the, you know, he come up to DC, you know, whatever. I ain't know him personally, but one day, um, and it's crazy because I was at a candlelight visual of a, do a double homicide, and I get mm. a DM on Twitter, and I really thought somebody, I thought this ain't really the time of like scamming, but I'm like, yeah. who the fuck playing like this? <laughs> he like, this pusher, give me a call. I'm like, what? <laughs> right, right, right. This before that though. So I'm like, oh, then he hit again, like, nah, like, yo, give me a call. Yeah. This was at the time when his uh, My Name Is My Name mm. uh, album was coming out, his first solo project. Yeah. And he wanted me to be a part of the video, was part of the rollout. Yeah. He was like, you know, because basically what he was saying was I had made my name my name. I come up under a job, but now people saw me in my own light. Exactly. So anyway, and from yeah. there, right, from there, uh, we just continued to, like, build, build, we built a brotherhood, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, when Obama was in office, uh, you know, I remember Pusha went to the White House. And the first time he hit me, like, hey, bro, what's some like to talk about reform and all this? Yeah. When Obama launched that clemency thing and mm -hmm. he was like asking the rappers and all that. So Pusha, like, hey, hit me, like, yo, what's some talking points, you know, blah, blah, blah. So then the next time they had another convenient, Pusha couldn't make it. And he sent me instead, yeah. which gave me, I didn't, Obama wasn't there, but people on his staff was there. Yeah. And it gave me a chance to really like 
raise my father's name yeah. in the White House. Come on now. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then after that, right, we missed that. Obama didn't get us, though. Boom. Mm -hmm. Now, so moving on, Pusher was in support of a Hillary Clinton, right? She lost. Mm -hmm. Boom. Next thing you know, uh, Pusher did a record with Lauryn Hill called mm -hmm. Coming Home. Mm -hmm. And some of the proceeds from the record went to benefit the Buried Alive Project. Mm. Which is Brittany Barnett's um, organization, her, Corey Jacobs, and uh, mm. Sharonda, what's Sharonda, her name? Jones. Sharonda Jones, yeah. people who, that she had already got out of prison. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So from there, he mentioned dad's name in that record. Yeah. Um, I'm just giving the timeline now, with you. to Brittany. Then we had an attorney, Brittany reaching out, like, yo, what's up? Yeah. Like, <laughs> You know, put and she was like in her travels. People had continued to say, "You need to meet Tony Lewis. You know Tony Lewis." And of course, people would ask me the same thing. Yeah. Um, but push and put us together, mm. and man, in the rest not history because when she started to represent Pop, you know what I'm saying. Well, first we gotta say, "Hey, Dad, I'm now I gotta run down to him <laughs> who she is, what she is." But she exactly. wrote this amazing yeah, book and already got a lawyer that I think yeah. got a lawyer that I think is pretty good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But then she, Don't be messing up my case. You hear me? Yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, you know, one of the other things, that, you know, that was one of the things we said, oh, I don't exactly. know, you know what I'm saying? And our relationship also had evolved from this standpoint. Um, again, we come from a top down structure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of black, as unfortunate too, I always tell a lot of young, young dudes I talk to, I wish they had the experience with a father that, you know, ain't nothing. You, you'll get your time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's cool. You got you to gotta earn your, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And through the years, though, you know, it would be, he'd say something. I was like, all right. Yeah. Like, boom, boom. But then it became, when I was like, I don't know, Dad. I, I see it this way. And yeah. then he started to say more like, okay, yeah. you see it that way? All right. Yeah. Yeah. But with this, it was like we always come together yeah. and make these decisions, right? So, but he he talked to Brittany. She said that when he read her book, mm -hmm. What is it in the midnight? What is it? Uh, yeah, knock at midnight. Knock at midnight. Mm. Yeah, wonderful. He was like, go get it. That yeah, book is yeah. awesome, man. But yeah. that's just, it touched it's awesome. him. Yeah, yeah. Right now, you know her mom had had done time, mm. yeah. right? And he, you know, pop was just we talking about so many similarities that yeah. her and I had the loving grandmother. The, oh, you know. Yeah. So anyway, we get we, so now she she with us. She on the team. So we put together this incredible motion. Yeah. You know, we pop got the toughest lawyer, I mean toughest judge in the federal yeah. courthouse in DC. My God. You yeah. know what I'm saying? For real. My yeah. God. Like, yeah. for, like for real, for real, this bro. It's on. crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. And we kind of telling her that. We trying to like trying to let her know, like, hey, because she been like on like some, you know, LeBron, like she like a phenom. Yeah. She, yeah. Shit she like, man, okay, but you know, she felt like I didn't got this person, yeah. not this person, and that person. Got so, hey, big me's time. Yeah, cut. yeah, yeah. His big got up his big time meets. cut. Big yeah, up yeah, yeah. Shout out to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to me. You know what I mean? Um I with you. Yeah. And so so then we put in this motion, uh, you know, with a two-point reduction. I, I can't leave this out about Pusha too. Like, yeah. I can must say this. Pusha also helped me. This we push, you know, they, they was trying to get this new uh uh sense and reform pushed through called the two-point reduction, right? Would yeah. help, you know, on average it would give people an eighteen month reduction, which yeah. is which is significant. And, and we speaking to me, he got that. It gave him I think cut like six, seven years off his sentence. Damn. Yeah. But for like in my Five kids, he would have got it, would have bought him straight out the door. Exactly. So me and Pusha had pushed this years ago. Uh, a write in campaign, email in campaign, you know, galvanized people, and, and along with other major efforts that went on in the same vein, yeah. that happened. That yeah. got pushed through the, the uh, Federal Sentencing Commission, right? Yeah. I even talked to Eric Holder, he was the Attorney General at that time, remember? Yeah. And I was like, hey, yeah, Mr. Holder, you need to support office. that, right? Yeah. In his office, right? So anyway, but <laughs> we, 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 we apply for that. Yeah. And I had my dad, man, that was that was tough because I just was yeah. sure it was we was yeah. after was all this time, blow. sir. That yeah, was a terrible blow. I was like, nope. Vicious denied. Jails, though. That was, yeah. Denied. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Denied. We we like. And this is what we we've often we've been through that before. Like yeah. but it was hard to regroup. And I'm look, you know, and it's crazy since he you know, we going on next week, it'll be six months, my father been home. But it was like, you know, he in there trying to be strong for me. I'm yeah. out here trying to be strong. We both broke, we crushed about yeah. that yeah. shit. But well, we gotta fake it though. We gotta I'm fake like, it like we ain't. Man, you all right, man, I'm all right. Exactly. You know what I mean? See, if he seen it, I'm like, damn, dad fucked up. This is the first time. Or yeah. I see it from him then, that adds to our stress exactly. and work. Exactly. So first thing we always at the end of the conversation. Son, you all right? And then yeah. Son, son, say, Dad, you all right? I'm all right. I say, all right, son, I'm you all right? right? I'm all right. Okay. Uh, Let's go. Slam the phone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> that's that's the kind of and shit. I gotta yeah. turn to to yeah. my wife and these two little girls too, though. Yeah. Man, that yeah. also came, you know, through this process. At first, it was yeah. just me, but now I got my wife and my babies, and I I got they, to hold up a face for them. Hope, yeah, they hopeful, right? Hope them, yeah. So, all right, we go, but then break. We like we going back to the drawing board, right? Yeah. So it was this thing called the, the you know uh, the first step act. Um, was a was a, a a law that got signed, a bill that got signed and passed through Congress, got signed in law by Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Um, that really went on to, to free about twenty thousand people, right? Yeah. Um, and not getting all in the minutia, but basically, uh, a lot of the reforms that had happened, they weren't what you call retroactive, meaning mm. they could they wouldn't apply to people that had already been sentenced, yeah. right? What the First Step Act did was say, especially the uh, 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 Obama era reform, the Fair Sentencing Act. Um, right. Could now be applied right. retroactively, yeah. right? So it really allows something that happened during the Obama administration to be applied in back, right? Yeah, and it's about the crack. It's the, about the, the crack. The, the hundred to one ratio. Yeah, the Obama had passed that. That it should be eighteen to one. Yeah, yeah. instead and of a hundred to one. Act. Exactly. So they didn't make it retroactive until ten years later. Okay, think about now. that. And then so Trump just basically signed then the law. What Obama was being asking for and made it retroactive. So yeah. that's how the fair citizen. Right. And uh, so when we were thinking about that. potentially doing compassionate release. Yeah. Um, and and you know, it was it was sort of like the stars aligning because, you know, we was preparing a motion for that, for compassion release, and you know, uh Brittany with her legal mm. prowess, yeah. legal Great. uh Stella, how Stella so she key. is as a as yeah. a as a saw, litigator. As a yeah. She saw that oh man, this judge had just ruled in a case that was crazy similar. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the things that we thought we would be eligible for, he would be eligible for. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I know it's how I always say we, but yeah. him was yeah. we was right there together, right? <laughs> exactly. I felt like I was. Come on, you know what I'm saying? But um, you know, Shit. because of his, you know, his rope, you know, these things got fine print. Yeah. Okay, this is good, but not for leaders, mm -hmm. not for you know guys King who King who King had King. cocaine yeah. and crack, Shit. and not, you know, it was all these little stipulations. Stipulation, yeah. You know, the hood, everybody in the neighborhood or in the city, be like, damn, Tom, because you know, a lot of people started to come home, even guys all around the country, like, damn, they let him out, they let him, you know, then you know, how your father still locked up. But it was these fine print things that we understood that you know people didn't. Yeah. But anyway. Brittany was able to sort of see that he had ruled in favor of something that was very, very similar, Thanks. right? And then um, some, 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 some guys out of DC, some home, Anton White, Eric Hicks, that also uh, the court. He did his, it wasn't the same judge, but out of coming out of the same court, mm -hmm. where they had got something in their favor that was okay. It was like, all right. Now let's go and, and bring big ups, Anton. Yeah, Anton shout out Eric Anton Hicks. White, Eric yeah, Hicks, White, man. No doubt, no doubt. Um, the homies and 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 and, and, and so they kind of that cracked the door mm -hmm. and Brittany putting together. I mean, I don't really think that it has been anybody, and I say this all deference and humility, uh, that came to the table with what we came to the table with. Yeah, right. You know. Be, over the years, I went into institutions saying, you know, we've done things not only collaborating over the phone and helping people in the community, but we've I've been in federal prison doing things to, together. I don't think there's any father. I went in and we we filmed a, a, a public service, a PSA, a nonviolence or anti-violence PSA. He yeah. and I. Exactly. That that was shared yeah. with youth in our city. Nobody can say in that prison. in federal federal, federal prison? prison. Yeah, we federal nice. prison. Nah, so we was we bought politicians, clergy, um, community members, family members. I am the when you talk about reentry in Washington D.C. and really, I mean across the country. I'm a, I'm the I'm expert, there. The I'm expert. there. I've, the you know what I'm saying? I do. This is what I do. Yeah. Right. So he's going to come in. You know, I'm his son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we was bringing all of this to the table like, hey, judge, come on, man. And yeah. not to mention 34 years yeah. Yeah. of incarceration. Is this, that, that, that was out. Like, and Miss Barnett a, had to put that shit together right. She put yeah. that mother. You couldn't deny that, that shit. She put that shit. It I was, cried real tears yeah. before the room. You know I cried when the room. But I'm talking about when I read yeah. the motion. Yeah. Because I think I was that thinking to myself. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. She's incredible. She's a beast. She's incredible. No doubt. Okay, senior, before I go to you getting your freedom, those 34 years, when you kept on seeing all of those young black men coming in up under the same situations hmm. for drug charges, for gang charges, yeah. just for the same thing over and over again, how did you? How did that make you feel just having to witness that for 30 years straight? <laughs> <laughs> And even with, you know, a lot of them coming in like that, they were still beating me the fuck home. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It yeah. was 
You know, I, I, it, it was real. My God, still getting out of there before you. Yeah, and and then some of them coming back, even with me still, you know, coming back after they. It was it was real disheartening, man. Yeah. You know, um, and a lot of them had been through his programs. So they would come up to me. I didn't even know. They'd be like, "Hey, man, my name's such and such, man. Your son Tony Lewis Jr. Man, he helped me. I was in, you know, I was in Project Empowerment. Um, he helped me with housing, man. Da da da. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? Why you back in here? What is <laughs> Man, I'm man, I'm you know I'm using them drugs and I'm da 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 and, I'm, and you know I'm like man that shit is um you making his work man that that's not cool man you know what I'm saying yeah but I still and you know and they I still try to bring them in man and try to because a lot of them really mean well man but yeah. again the, the the environment the neighborhood man the hood yeah, the it, trauma just, man yeah and the trauma a lot of trauma trauma that, bro a lot of shit we don't even know that these our young brothers and sisters go through man yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. yeah, it leads up to, to, to all this kind of shit, man. Yeah. The, the men and the women. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it just got so bad now until I'm like, God damn, I never seen this kind of shit. Mm. You know, he knew it a lot better than me because he was, you know, coming I up in watched the world it, with it. You know, and, and really, I watch, I be, I, you know, a lot of times I, I feel like, um, like I was on a, like I was in a plane crash, bro, and I was the only person to survive. Like it's just, I just look damn. at, and you know, I would live and say I never lived, I never left my neighborhood. Yeah. Like to this day, you yeah. know. What I mean? and, and that's giving me a, a very unique perspective. Like I watch yeah. every day. I watch what I could have became. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's deep, man. And, and you know, even in our neighborhood, they gentrified a, a, a lot, but some of the same remnants are there, and, and they my people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's also guiding my work. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But but to, like I think the 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 connection, you, you know, the men who left during his time. But like what they left, right? What yeah. the, who they left and what they left uh, created um, sort of this this like this deep void, yeah. right, in community, and the systemic things that led who that pushed young men into criminal criminality in his era. Yeah, that didn't stop when they left. Yeah, you understand when those systemic things are still there. Mm -hmm. The lack of access to opportunity and, and education, though it's better than what it was before. Yeah, right. But if you aren't connected to people that have done it, then it's Difficult. Like if somebody could tell you, and this happened to me, right? Yeah. Say, Go to school, man. You know, you don't want this shit. Da, da, da. That's right. I think a lot of people get that information. Yeah. But people only teach what they know. Come on now. All right? Yeah. All right, so why are you telling me that? I'm still watching you. Mm -hmm. You showing me, though, what you do know how to do. Yeah. And when I have <laughs> questions about how to do what you're telling me I should be doing, yeah. there's nobody to turn to. Even when I, I, even if I walk down that road, only the courageous, only the super strong can really stay on those roads, right? Yeah. There's a lot of kids from the hood that go off to college, do they stay, though? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because yeah. when they have the issues, when they had a problem, when they need money, when they, when they, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's nobody help them navigate. That's exactly. why a lot of them come home on Christmas break, be like, man, fuck that, I ain't, I ain't going, going back. back. Yeah. I'm out here. Yeah. I'm outside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, those are the kind of things that I've like spent my life trying to stabilize. Men and women coming home, yeah. my work in reentry to help because if, if we stabilize the adults, we have a better shot at helping the children like reach their potential. Exactly. But until we do that. Right, but the systemic things that I'm speaking about, these draconian laws, right? Yeah. First of all, we gotta attack that. Obviously, you know, uh, you know, our big thing is is, is pushing upon our uh, Joe Biden, our president Joe Biden, who was the architect yeah. as a senator yeah. of these laws that we're speaking of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That he has to right his wrongs, right? Exactly. With mass clemency. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's but what we need. Secondly, the ability for people to get clean slates, bro. Yeah. How, how he did thirty four years? How was it a, a, a building that he can't live in or a job that he can't get? He did thirty. He went to jail thirty four years exactly. ago. Exactly. You know all these other things, and so yeah. um, it's more pertinent on this administration. Yeah. Now, Joe Biden than it ever been. Joe Biden. Exactly. Have compassion. Have mercy. Uh, I'm just five or six months home from prison, and. There's a lot of good men still in prison with these same type of draconian sentences that I had, like uh, Timothy Williams, uh, James Kirby Burks, uh, Big Meech, uh, uh, Andrew Lewis, uh, Jermaine Woods. Uh, Silk. Yeah, Silk, my man Silk, Silk, Silk Weight. These men that I personally work with, 
every day we get these, these young guys that's coming in and out of prison and for violent crimes. And we work with them. I, they still working with them in prison right now. Even though they current life sentences themselves, they need or they deserve some uh, yeah. some clemency. New, yeah, 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 yeah. no yeah. doubt. Hopefully, Nugent you know? get it. Get Nugent, it, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of good men, man, and yeah. they they not getting away with their crime. Yeah, all these guys I just named are like twenty five to thirty years in. Twenty five mm. to thirty years in, and came in young just like me. Yeah, and they accept their responsibility. Ain't nobody saying let nobody out with no uh, get out of jail free car. How can you when you didn't did two to three and four decades? Come on, Joe exactly Biden. Right. Get that clemency pen out and commute these sentences, man, yeah, of these man. good men, man. Absolutely. They'll do better out here helping yeah. our young people uh, than they are in, in, in prison, man. And they paid their debt, man. I just had to. Yeah. Had well, no, nah, we people, with you man. on that, senior. Answer me this, though. When you realized you was about to go home, how did that hit you? <laughs> Again, another ton of bricks. <laughs> Because <laughs> what the decision, what I, what I found out, what son is Friday night, Saturday that, morning, Saturday yeah, morning. That shit was, I mean, and, that's another thing. We didn't was get, what no build up. Yeah, there wasn't no build up. And I was gone Monday. <laughs> Yeah. Was, oh, yeah. So was, yeah, on a Friday. On a Friday so, that's how like quick. Yeah. We got the word Friday and we had to go pick him up Monday morning. Oh my God. I, March 18th was, we got the call and March 20th is when we went and picked him yeah. up. I was on a plane. I guess got off a plane in New Orleans. And Britney FaceTimed me, man, and just said Monday. It's the most crazy. It's the most surreal. I still get goosebumps. I like, just got yeah. Bro, bro, <laughs> shit. bro, you got your FaceTime, like, and she say Monday. I'm like, what? Like, what you, what? Like, what? I was, just man. just put the motion in. It, 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 that's happened, it happened like, like this. Yeah. The gov so. on, on that, on the 16th, the, we got word that the government did not oppose Right, so that's yeah. one of the U.S. Uh, attorney's office. Yeah, they didn't oppose. That's which, how powerful that motion was. That right? really but we've been here before. I'm telling him though. I'm like, hey, I'm like, hey, bro. Yeah. I'm like, pop, man. Look, the government ain't opposed. I'm excited. But he like, I don't know. So okay, that's good. But man, you know, you you, you, you <laughs> know, you, you shit go shot. You ain't so trying to let yourself yeah, get shit. Exactly. But I'm you like, can't. man, fuck that. that is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is it. I'm, <laughs> You know, yeah. I'm like, I'm claiming that. But then, yeah, so that, yeah. that Thursday, I'm like, I'm telling Brent, I'm like, should I even go on this trip? I'm like, so what happens? So like, we never been here. I'm like, so what if they, they say, yeah, like, do he get right out? She like, yeah, basically. But so Shit. then Friday, can Thursday, nothing. Friday come, man, and she FaceTimed me. I was in the Uber, me and my wife, man. And I just was floating the rest of that weekend, Sunday. Came home that Monday morning, me and the fam, we got in the Sprinter, man, and went and got him. Oh, but when I talked to him that Saturday, it was like he ain't believe. It. Yeah. I was like, you know, I always say shit like I'm coming to get you, big boy. But I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming it's to get like, you. Yeah. Yeah. He like, he like, and it was through like, email. It was through email when he said he this like, shit. Yeah, right on saying, she's like, are you projecting or are you? You know, yeah. I'm for real. Like, I can't yeah. believe this shit. I I'm can't, you know. And then I had to immediately go get on the phone. I was like, son, what he said, dad? Get your shit. You, I'll be there Monday to get you. They, oh my they god. Approved. I was like. I was on the phone. I was stunned. And motherfuckers looking at it. They ain't know what, to, but I was fucking stunned. I couldn't. It was, I mean, it was so much happiness and joy, but it was just the, you know, it was, I was stunned, you know, because I, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Bro, we, you know, so we talking about like, you know, David and Goliath, bro. Exactly. Like we, you know, I'd be forever talking about like, he was supposed to die in prison, bro. Yeah. And they meant it. Shit. But we did it. Yeah, that problem, abrupt man. change, though, because I mean, mm -hmm. you go from being institutionalized to a free man in a matter of four days yeah. without even expecting it. Yeah. So, what was that transition getting dad mm -hmm. home? Mm -hmm. And it's like, he like, wait a minute, I've been in this uh -huh. thing for 30 something years, and then y'all won't be out here to be free. Yeah, it's a motherfucking sale. Exactly. <laughs> it was a lot of funny shit, man. Like, <laughs> shit that I, habits that I had, and they was fucking with me. Yeah. Like, well, dad, you ain't gotta worry about this. You ain't gotta yeah. do that shit no more. You're home, man. You're free. Oh, yeah. you're free, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that freedom, you know, you and we still, you know, it will probably be remnants of that the rest of his life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was he, he was on he was free twenty six years. He was in prison thirty four. You know, Ooh. and but I think I think also and you know this is real for, you know, we laugh and joke. We can laugh and joke about a lot of stuff because like I again, I came up in a world where. That was people had always been coming home, and I work in this, right? Yeah. I think I'm. I was. I was uniquely positioned. Yeah. Right. But there's other families who not. 
Yeah. And they getting somebody home that they thought they knew. Yeah. And it, you know, it really that There's family unification thing is tough. Shit, man. Yeah. A lot of families can't After rebound from this. You know, like yeah. for me, it's like, and we were so connected through yeah. the process. But I, I didn't expect, you know, uh, him to the, you know, the person who went in eighty nine to come home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I knew it was gonna be some things that we you know, but also he he's always if you anybody know him and who he was and how he was and all that, how he is, he's a for he was in front of everybody anyway. Yeah. So the 34, <laughs> you know, it obviously impacted him, but not as much as probably others, because he was already ahead of us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. he, he learned things, but you wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. that is a reality of prison. The, the in, in families, there's not enough uh support. For families receiving people that have been gone, especially people gone been gone multiple decades. Exactly. You know what I mean? And you come home in the world the iPhone and uh, yeah. Uber the and the automatic, yeah, the automatic yeah, the uh, faucets and yeah. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. I yeah, remember the crazy. one thing I'm, a, I'm I think is that was the funniest thing. My wife, right? Uh -huh. And man, God bless me. God has blessed me with my wife, bro. Yeah. My wife don't come from the world we come from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know she loved us to death, and what she, you know, I remember she hit me one day like, "Hey," she was like, "I don't know, you know, should I, how can I tell Daddy I cut the lights off?" <laughs> I said, "What?" I said, "Well, just tell me." She said, "Nah, you know, she ain't trying to." She's like, she, she said, "But he leave the lights on." I said, "Yes, well, yeah. you know, he come to a place where the lights ain't control. He okay, he control the lights." Yeah. Uh, she said, "Oh shit." Damn, like I ain't even think about it. Damn, yeah, like, yeah. Like the lights cut off. Somebody else cutting the lights exactly. off. Way came, you know. Just think about something like yeah. that, mm -hmm. right? And I that's basic, you. right? Yeah. Shit, but it's just, yeah. yeah, but it's, it's significant. Just, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because when that light bill comes, it's like, I yeah, you know, she like, yeah, like, come on, Daddy, you know what I'm saying? But the process has been, yeah. uh, you know, we living, you know, we 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 living, fuck. Fuck living a dream. We living a prayer, man. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. for real, bro. Like every day, and I get up, I say, like, damn. You know, rather take dropping them off at work or some shit. Yeah. Or, or when you know, weekend we eating breakfast, my wife cooking for us, and the girl me and my daughters. Like I dreamt of, I prayed yeah. for that home. You know what I'm saying? I prayed Same for here. that home. Yeah. It's still like I'm like, y'all hope I won't wake up. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I want to ask, senior. Waking up. At home, yeah. How many times did you wake up like, where the hell am I at? Yeah, N numerous times. It's starting to wear off now. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little bit. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing that sunlight come through the window and it not be coming through the bars. Yeah, you know, at the bars, all on the windows and shit, and you know, not hearing the fucking keys all night and the light shining in your face. They count four or five times within the night. You know, ten, twelve, I think two. Then five and the yeah. and all this shit through the shine and like kicking the door and makes you we gotta make sure you're alive. Man, you keep fucking waking me up. You keep but that's the way print yeah, so I'm I'm getting used to that not happening and enjoying it, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh it's just starting to kick in like that. But uh yeah. But for a minute for you know, uh up until maybe the last two months, it was like like what you just expressed, yeah. uh, expressed you know, just waking up and saying, Man, fucking I I'm Free. I'm not, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And it was kind of the reversal with the nightmares in prison. Mm. That you be dreaming that you home and then you wake up and you look at the window and the fucking bars and this shit My is God. steel and that shit just, you be like, because the dream seems so real a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. But when you fucking wake up and or the officer wake you up and shine the light, you know, still in this motherfucking yeah. shit with life without parole. Exactly. You know? Junior, mm -hmm. being able to see dad hands on with a man after all of these years. <laughs> And knowing that you had to lay the smack down to get him up yeah. out of there, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. How does that make you feel, man? I, I um, I'm just grateful. That's all I can really say. I'm grateful to God, man. Like, yeah. honestly, Big I mean, there's to nothing. That's not Big man. To God. Because I, I'm saying I, I get how insurmountable and and and, and, and be, I'm gonna be real with you, Talk bro. Talk to me. Over, over this past, especially the last 10, 15 years. You know, you know anybody you name that's in criminal justice reform, activism world, all they know me. I've helped 
work yeah. with them and all that. Bro, ain't nobody take that free Tony Lewis by the horns like they could have. Now, mm. I don't know what they was doing in, in behind the scenes. I don't know if people even told him, hey, look, we love the son. We know he's doing a lot of great work, but we ain't, that's a dead cause. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I kept fighting, bro. Yeah. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying, um, really didn't think that this was possible. And yeah. I know that, mm. right? So the, they so, tell, They've been telling they, you that. Yeah, since yeah it's been coming. To a oh, yeah, it's coming out. Like, oh, we don't know that. You know what I'm saying? We go to a I couldn't tell you, Tom, but man, yeah, just, they pull really, pull and, and some people, side, yeah, man. like pull us to say, listen, man. Ain't nobody believe you could do that shit, including us. Yeah. That's why we wouldn't, we ain't, yeah, we but I ain't stop. And, 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 and I pray to God that people can see this as yeah. it may not be around knowing your incarcerated loved one, but just in whatever you going through, whatever your struggle is, that people are telling you it ain't possible. Keep believing and keep putting the work in. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. And don't quit your people. Come yeah. on now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Out. Don't quit your people, man. So that every day, I just that's a when I wake up and, and we there together, man. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think you know the beauty of it is, uh, my my partner KJ told me he was like, mm. he was like Slug, man. You know, I know you've been wanting your father to come home, but he came home at at the right time. Yeah. You know, we in a good the, the stability you have, the family you have, the mm. the wife you got you. You know what you doing in the world, and then your dad can come home, and you got him, and we helping the poor and the mm -hmm. other people, exactly. helping our city, and helping these youngins, and trying to do all we can to reunite families. Yeah. yeah I'm living Big up to KJ. Yeah, shout KJ. out to KJ, man. And if y'all ever in DC, Manifest. bro, if you come up to DC, yeah. Ever, you got to pull up in a spot I'm called Manifest, bro. Let's yeah. Barbershop, coffee shop, high end retail, uh, 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 uh speak easy. It's incredible, yeah, bro. Black exactly. on is, is a black on, when you come, I gotta business, take man. you, bro. You got exactly. to pull up on Manifest. Yeah. And, and my homegirl Angel, she got a spot called Black and Forth. And yeah. you can look at Black and Forth. Big up Angel. Yeah, many <laughs> Big up Angel. female entrepreneur. She had a spice store that is called the Spice Suite that she turned into now her own strip mall yeah, yeah. where she literally has. Um, other women, like black women, own yeah. businesses that occupy the space. Yeah. And then she got a team of, of women called the Spice Girls that are all individual uh, business owners mm. that sell their product at her store, Yeah, right? That get hot, the, the highest of volume. Yeah. But they're able to sell their products, but also at when they have their day, um, they're able to actually serve as like the staff in the store. Mm. I mean, it's, it's it's nothing like it happening in the country when no, y'all when yeah. you pull up, bro. You gotta, I gotta take you through them two spots, man. Okay, then. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah, then I ain't yeah. even plugging it because they're my people. I'm plugging it because for black people in this country, um, you know, it's it's about it's no we can do anything, mm -hmm. and it can't. It don't always has to be in the way of entertainment and sports which is amazing yeah, yeah right but it's other people out here man shifting culture moving the needle that we need to know about and being inspired by and yeah. i'm again all of those kind of folks in my circle are the people that held me up and supported me when this shit was tough and yeah. say dog we got you whatever yeah. we need to do yeah. we gonna do it and so i just um they are just a couple uh and my man Silas and the laundry yeah. and others <laughs> that school helped this school be in school Zane Zane Lock. Well, Zane Zane Lock. Lock. yeah, yeah man no yeah. and i know damn one thing i love about atlanta yeah about the a yeah. is is they is, 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 is the they doing it down here in that yeah. same way in a yeah. big sense. and i yeah, love yeah, to man. see it bro yeah. i love what you that's what you know what i'm saying what you doing right here i love what y'all doing right here we got to give you big ups and we don't do that enough to each other bro yeah we don't i mean that and we 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 mean that we don't this ain't all of you know, it's people that our young people need to know that they can. I think we're born with a with a, 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 a infinite power to impact other people mm -hmm. as human beings. That's what we we have it. Yeah, we just got to make people believe that. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. our young people specifically, and a lot of them be having an impact, you know, on the negative side, but some of them doing amazing things and yeah. we don't even hold them up enough. No, come on. You know, now, the young and just that working in the, in the in 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 the grocery store, the young and that work for Amazon or FedEx or you know what I'm saying? Like we gotta start like that's admirable, bro. Yeah. That's on, but that ain't you ain't lame. Yeah. You know yeah. yeah. No, I'm with y'all a thousand percent. And being on in that cell for thirty four years or life, you taking a, another black person's life or going and doing a rack of time, we gotta start making that shit lame. Yeah. That ain't what that's that that's not for you yeah what do you think caused it to become cool mm. yeah that's well, i that's think that i think that's a question right there that that's is a, that's, a, that's a deep a tough one. that's a tough one well, man. okay i look at it like this i this my thing when we talking about right i think our culture 
And when I say our culture, I ain't talking about like entertainment or rap culture. Yeah. I'm talking about street culture. Yeah. I feel like we come from that culture. So I can that culture has been appropriated, even by us sometimes, yeah. in like entertainment and fashion and all. It's been appropriated, yeah. right? Um, I think fundamentally though, people growing up in impoverished communities, right? Yeah. Some of it is the lifestyle is not just solely choice. Yeah. And I think a lot of what happens in our community are informed by variables outside of our community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? We know that. But only we are held accountable for yeah. what transpires. Yeah. And so I think it's a mixture, a bevy of, of things that contribute to um, it becoming cool. But I think fundamentally why... Somebody, a, a young kid in my neighborhood, will revere a Tony Lewis senior. Yeah, was that he came from an environment where it was nothing, and he fought back. Yeah, it's not about oh he, he so no you 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 were inspired by the fact that he come from where I come from exactly, and look what he doing. Come on. I, because it wasn't no other avenue to do that. Exactly. What we've tried to do collect, and so that's when in today's day I've tried to be mm. where you that same yeah. guy in that neighborhood can now yeah. look and say, "Oh, it is I can another do that. way." That. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with and without, you. And without having to sacrifice yourself and your family in the process. Exactly. Of that shit. Exactly. That's the you know that's yeah. the dynamic. That's what we've been trying to work towards. And there's a lot of other people I think that, um, you know. But you know, but but I think you know. Also, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like you be in a club, you ever be in a club, and you see the dude, and they giving off drug dealer aesthetic, like all the way. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. The little baby on, and they get they rapping word for word, or the you know what I'm saying ESTG on, or whatever, yeah. right? And and they giving off drug dealer aesthetic, and you feel like you find out he an IT guy. <laughs> right, but the that's that but, turn we need to make because the girl, yeah. but the turn. girl, the girl don't like the IT guy. Yeah, yeah. Now nah, you 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 feel from yeah. the, from the church girl to the street girl to the to the, to the, the groupie girl, he getting the break in the bankroll as the IT guy. Exactly, but he can't give off IT guy aesthetic though. <laughs> in the club, in the club, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Then we Come and, on. but see, so 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 it's a. It's it's, it's it's layers to that. Yeah, it's, it's layers to that, and we, yeah. we really so we got to do some introspection. We got to do some self evaluation. Yeah, but but also be who you are. Exactly. That's the that's the key for everybody, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it is is deep that that uh we was at we spoke at Virginia State University. Mm-hmm. Shout out Dr. West Bellamy. He brought us up there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and one of the things up. I shared with them youngers in there, like, listen, man, don't let nobody make you feel like being here is lame. Yeah. Y'all the next leaders of the free world. Come on. Yeah. And we gotta start up at, at empowering our young people and stand no on doubt. that. Yeah. No but doubt. but but also you don't have to, you don't shit on those in the hood. Exactly. Or guys make men and women making bad choices right now. Cause some is that's again, you gotta try to inspire them to, and show them that we from the same place and you can do something different. Come on, I don't yeah. I ain't cut my ties yeah, where yeah. I'm from. My homies, I'm I'm one of them. They know that. Yeah. But they know in order for us to engage, I, they gotta be on what I'm on, and 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 I'm I'm here when they ready. Mm-hmm. But up until that point, I can't be hanging out with y'all every day all day though. That can't Facts. happen. Facts. Because when they come spin, they not gonna say, "Oh, Tony Lewis Jr. out there." We gonna come back later. Yeah. And yeah. I know more anyway. They ain't yeah. doing that. Yeah. Come on. Now. We I, we didn't lost. We said, lost too many family friends through that yeah. same. We you know what I'm saying. Exactly. So. The paradigm shift has to be empowering our community to know that there's other routes outside of the streets. Yeah. When people go into the streets and make mistakes, that when they come back, we're going to foster a, a culture of redemption. That's right. That they can get it together this time. Yeah. Got to start holding each other accountable. Yeah. Right? But the dumb shit, man, the the indiscriminate violence, the the carjacking, the robbery, yeah. the, the 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 we don't respect that we shit. Can't. Exactly. We can't respect that shit. Man. You know what I'm saying? Come on, we don't respect. And that, that part, if y'all glorifying that and trying to make like that's all right, yeah, then now nah, we gotta address that. That ain't okay in our community. It Come never on. has been, and we didn't got into like this bad space. But I, I'm very optimistic as yeah. always that like 
we can come. We're going to come out of this. We ain't going to say we can't. We will. That's right. Um, we telling all the youngest, man, don't get taken. Come yeah. on now. Don't get taken, yeah. Sure. How can folks contact y'all, though, to get more of this story and to get involved? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, definitely on all the platforms, for me, uh, Mr. Tony Lewis Jr., yeah. Mr. Tony Lewis Jr., this, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Tony Lewis on Facebook. We got to give DC at nothing. Yeah. Com, yeah. Tony yeah. Lewis Jr. Com. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, and, uh, and I'm very, uh, you know, um, uh, transparent about all the activities we be having going on and more yeah. things to pull up on us. If you have it in DC, um, and then if you know if you want me to come pull up on you, man, bring us out. We looking forward to moving around the country. Yeah. Like I said, we just at VSU. VSU was at spoke at University of Maryland College mm-hmm. Park. We're really trying to get around and lecture at these different universities. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the range that we have, you know, yeah. can put us anywhere. Uh, and I want to be able to, to deliver messaging mm-hmm. across the board. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it can be you know sort of. Uh, uh, coordinated mm. on all in, on, in the hood, in the prisons, in the colleges, in exactly. the state houses, on Capitol Hill. Come on, you know what I mean? No, I'm with that's, you. I'm looking to impact yeah, it across okay. all, all all facets. See, are you taking any calls over there? No, I'm just I'm just sitting there. I'm just you know my son had me in amazement every time. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm still learning. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you. And, uh, I'm with you. Uh, just six months out, five months out, and. Uh, just uh, yeah, just yeah. being enlightened. I'm loving it. Tony Lewis Jr. B, appreciate you, bro. No problem. Appreciate you, Tony Lewis Jr. Appreciate you, man. Same thing, yo, man. Appreciate y'all coming through this thing. Anytime y'all in the city, pull back up on the plane. If you're going to run this thing back. Shout out to me too, man. Yeah, I'm going to run up, though, fool. Shout out to me, man. Let's get it. Behind Radio, shout it. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. We gone.